Backlash building over New York City-based psychiatrist saying she fantasizes about killing white people during a speech at Yale University. Dr. Aruna Kilanani making those explosive comments in a guest lecture to medical students back in April. I had fantasies of unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way, daring their body, and wiping my bloody hands on that walking away from the relatively guilty. Now, I don't want to be guilty. 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 Like I did the world a f***ing favor. The white people are out of their minds and they have been for a long time. We are asking a demented, violent predator who thinks that they're a saint or a superhero to accept responsibility. It ain't gonna happen. They have five holes in their brain. The psychiatrist claims she was taken out of context and was speaking metaphorically, and Yale is now backtracking, saying in a statement that those comments are antithetical to school values, but the university was well aware of the speech and reportedly restricted online viewing after it happened. So, Dana, it seems like the doctor needs a doctor. Right, so this class that she was teaching was one that would allow you to get your licensing credit. So it was one of the ones that you had to take. So this is the kind of thing wow. that is allowed, right? So if you wanted to become a psychiatrist, you could go to this lecture and, and, and take her class. I, as I read that entire interview that she did with Barry Weiss, and I have to say, like, to me, I, I'm not a psychiatrist, obviously, but I was like, this person is insane. And the fact that Yale tried to suppress views... Mm -hmm. Like, where have we heard that before? Like, yeah. that, is that censorship? Like, is that wrong? That they knew that it could cause them a big problem. I can't imagine that they um, want this kind of person there. Now, some people might say, that's just one lady. It's just one crazy, it's just one lady, and it's, it's not representative. <laughs> but when you think about how much we're all talking in the country about critical race theory yeah. and curriculum that's being suggested for schools, districts all across the country, and this type of thing is happening at the universities, then where do they go next? Yep. Right? They graduate. Yep. And Come. Absolutely. You make the point that, you know, this is a class you could take for credits. Well, that means that you're supposed to take what she's saying seriously and as if this is something that should be credible in terms of an argument. But Geraldo, basically what she's saying is you're allowed to murder white people for the sake of them being white. That sounds pretty racist to me. Well, I don't know about you is white it people, but... <laughs> is it racist? <laughs> is it? You're what you mean, we. It is. Um... <laughs> It, first of all, it, this absolutely uh, confirms my theory that all psychiatrists are crazy. <laughs> uh, they, uh, you just now you just smeared a whole group. Based I on... did, I did, I smeared the whole group. Uh, but you want to answer you my know, question? This, is, this, this casual hatred is very, very troubling, and it underlies a lot of a vibe that's out there right now where you have, uh, talk about cr critical race theory, you have critical race relations going on all over the place, this one to that one and this one to that one. I think it's very, very troubling. I was a, a fellow at Yale at Calhoun College, uh, named after Senator John C. Calhoun uh, from you know, uh, the early 19th century, who was a racist apparently. John Kennedy said he was one of the great senators ever, uh, but uh, they re rediscovered that he was a racist uh, a few years ago, and so they changed the name of Calhoun College, where I was a Calhoun Fellow, and, and you know, it, I quit. I quit because it was so gratuitous. It, it was so, they were so politically correct. And to, to launch this person and then attempt to cover it up, it's never the crime, it's always the cover-up. They got, they got and, and I say that, I, I have a beautiful third-year law student at Yale, my, <laughs> my daughter. I'm very proud of the association, but uh, uh, this woman is, uh, is nuts. Greg? Yeah, I mean, uh, when Dana says, it, it is how many minds has she touched mm -hmm. uh, that end up in your human resources department, right? Mm -hmm. Or in public relations. And the goal, without question, is to create a race war. This, 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 this language isn't about uniting a country. It's about splitting it and making sure that it ends violently. Can you imagine having her as, you know, she has patience. She actually has. Yeah. Could you imagine if she was your analyst? Because she's actually talking about her white patients publicly. And she was not using their names, but lumping them in and, and describing them as uh, guilt-ridden, uh, bread-rejecting freaks. Which is when you, when, you, when you generically apply like a certain kind of identity to a group that's negative, that's racist. She was basically demeaning all of her white patients. Imagine how quickly a white MD would be disbarred if he had politically... 
publicly, I'm sorry, smeared his black patients. Yeah. If he got up there and says, you know the problem with my black patients? A, B, C, and D. That person would be, a na would be naturally scorned. This backlash that she's exper experiencing now isn't even a backlash. Yeah, no. It's us talking about it while Yale covers it up. She can, by the way, in this, her defense about it being out of context, what she's trying to say is that she once, I believe, was a person so consumed with anger and that she's confessing it now. She's telling you, this is how I feel because I hate white people so much. And that's the context. The problem is she identifies her problem, but not the source. And her source is the obsession with race. The more people become obsessed with race, the more of this dis this delusion and antipathy and hatred will spread. And it, it's, it, it's, it's demonic. It's actually, yeah. when you hear that, you feel the presence. Uh, it's demonic. Yeah, Sean. So, so just, I want to make a, a couple points. So th the name of the speech at Yale was the psychopathic problem of the white mind. Right. Can you Yale imagine putting any other race in there? Right. In insane. So what I what concerns me is you have all these little kids across America who are being taught that they're white supremacists because they're white or they're racist because they're white. I mean, th how destructive is that for little children? Number one. But what concerns me more is the Democrat Party is pushing this ideology, and they have a long history as racist segregationists, they supported Jim Crow, and they're doing the same thing here just in a different way. Now they've switched from black and now they've gone to white, but this is the MO of Democrats, racism, segregation, separation on race, and it will destroy our country. Yeah, it comes down to identity politics, which is now manifesting itself in a worse ideology, which is critical race theory. All right, up next, a center in the sports world. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.